it's such a, a huge relief for me, not needing to seek for anything in my experience and not even wanting to like stop being afraid or stop being angry, stop being jealous. You know, these are things that I kept telling myself not to do so I will be able to overcome every moment and relate to people and be open. And I remember this um, very painful self-commentary to myself about, oh, again, I, I failed. You know, I, I said I get something that was not appropriate and, and felt very ashamed of that. Again, I was angry. Again, I acted in ways that I feel sorry about. And I found myself in that loop again and again of not really um, understanding how to get out of it. Do you, do you know what I mean? And that it feels like um, being so locked in that loop that I'm trying to calm my mind when fear is coming up or anger comes up, but I can't manage <laughs> to release it completely. And if I did manage with um, replacing my thoughts into positive thoughts or trying to think positively about other people or, you know, trying to be silent. And that was also such an effort for me to, to hold my, that anger back or that fear and to admit that they have it, to not admit that they have it. And again, it was a lot of neutralization of these thoughts and feelings in order to not feel to not speak, to not think that way. So that was a whole life. That was 10 years ago, and I'm, I'm so grateful uh, meeting this, um, this training. Um, because before that, that was a whole self-commentary on that, how to improve myself, how to become a better person, how can I do it better tomorrow, how can I speak openly with my family, um, with my husband, that time was my boyfriend and you know how to even with myself how to let myself just just be completely free and I love these talks when Candice was saying it's just to be completely free the freedom of mind to free ourselves from the belief in all this ever-changing thoughts emotions sensations and other experiences and to be introduced very directly to the power of our mind, to open intelligence, stop thinking for a moment. And recognize what remains. What remains when you stop thinking? Alertness, cognizance, the power to know, and after that brief stop thinking, all the thoughts and emotions are coming back. And whether we are thinking or not thinking at all, open intelligence is always present. And all these, all these thoughts, emotions, sensations, in the balance view training, we call it data, just to keep it very simple and that we can communicate <laughs> directly and all data are completely inseparable from open intelligence. It's completely inseparable from our power to know, from, our power, from the power of our mind. Like um, the rays of the sun are inseparable from the sun itself. Did you hear that metaphor in the video? It was beautiful. The rays of the sun are inseparable from the sun. Like the color blue is inseparable from the sky. Uh, for me, to be introduced to open intelligence in the, in the first meeting when I came 10 years ago, and hearing that was uh, very inviting, very welcoming, and so very direct to know that there's something about me that I can rely on in every moment. And I, to train that up, there is a practice and in Balanced View. We call the practice short moments of open intelligence repeated many times until it becomes continuous. <clears throat> so what is this short moment? It's a short moment of 
completely relaxing body and mind. Whenever we remember to do so, without any effort, without trying to um, think about short moment, that's also helpful. Instinctive short moments of relying on open intelligence. And repeating this recognition, whenever we remember to do so, and what happens, these short moments just becomes longer in a very natural way. Um, and you asked me how it was for me. At the beginning, it was recognizing open intelligence for a short moment. <clears throat> and it was in, um, in negative data streams where I felt that I immediately wanted to change that negativity. Um, I didn't feel comfortable, so immediately I changed it to positive thinking. So a short moment was an amazing invitation to completely relax, to completely relax with the data as it is. Fear, for example, was something that I was so afraid of. <laughs> I was afraid of fear. And I was afraid of so many things, and you know, like darkness or people or being on my own or being in conversation with people, being in conversation with men, all kinds of situations that I was just trying to avoid not being there, removing myself from the situation so I don't feel fear. So short moments of open intelligence were so practical for me because we never know what will happen in our life. There are some situations that we think we are avoiding, but then they're just like completely there. <laughs> we can't really avoid them. They're just coming to us. <laughs> and then what do we do? Any, any kind of technique wouldn't help. You know, we can sit and meditate, but then uh, we know that we cannot avoid that fear when it comes up in a full power. We can try to calm our mind, but then it seems like for me, the fear is even stronger. So a short moment was an invitation to let that fear be as it is and relax completely, relax the need to describe why I'm fearing and why I have this fear now and to also connect that fear with the uh, people. So you see there's so many ways in which we can free ourselves in one single short moment. It's a short moment that cuts off all the descriptions and elaborations and keeps it very pure, very clean, very clear, and very responsive. These short moments, they give immediate benefit. Once we take a short moment, we know what to do. We know how to respond to situations in a way that will be beneficial for us and for others. Uh, for example, uh, so that was with fear, starting with short moments, and then, oh, that's, that's okay, it's, it's less, uh, I, I less feel a victim to that fear. I didn't say initially short moment just completely resolve fear. I did feel afraid, but it allowed me to gain confidence in my own stability and power to know what to do in each situation rather than avoiding, replacing, indulging, and then settling into that stability within myself, that power to know what is of most benefit and then doing the, the course of the 12 Empowerments, which is the foundation course, which you all are almost completing soon. Um, I mean, some of you, all of you. <laughs> yeah, done, some, some not. But then really looking at all, for me it was looking at all of the relationship I was avoiding and starting to take responsibility for the ways I've been avoiding relationship with myself um, acting on my feelings and emotions like anger or blame or criticism or cynicism. Who, who, who felt cynic, cynic, cynical? <laughs> who felt cynical? I mean, that was something, that's an, a practical example of something that resolved. Or, um, or you know, using a sarcasm as a mean of avoiding relationship. You know, when you try to make your point with something and you say something sarcastic, and that was a way of avoiding relationship with people, or gossiping, that was something that completely resolved for me, gossiping about people. And it was also very um, uh, uncomfortable. I, I didn't know, even if it was like good gossiping, you know, when you say good things about people, and. It was very, 
not comfortable for me. And doing the 12 empowerments allowed me to see how using these ways of relating, using my speech in a harmful way, blaming and being angry and just saying what I want, it showed me the consequences of such belief in these negative emotions and how it harmed me and harmed people in my life and harmed relationships in my life where I could just um, feel very victim to until the 12 empowerments, which gave me all the tools to see how I can take responsibility for my actions, for my speech, for my body qualities and activities. And, and you know, it's not like, it's something that we gain confidence with time, like now I'm 10 years into the training. And so these are things that, for example, in my intimate relationship, being angry and blaming the other person is not coming up. Um, blaming him for my expectation, that's not coming up. Uh, Self-commentary resolved completely. Uh, uh, thinking I need to change myself resolved completely. Seeking for well-being in circumstances, relationships, places, holidays resolved completely. And it doesn't mean that, you know, I'm just sitting in my room and smiling all the time. Uh, I mean, I'm, I feel uh, that um, satisfaction is found in each short moment of open intelligence and recognizing reality as it is and fully enjoying life. Not in the same way I, I thought I'm enjoying before, because before I was seeking for that enjoyment and trying to keep it in place like holding on into it. For example, holding on to the romantic moments with my intimate partner and how it will be in the future, thinking about that and imagining things, holding into <clears throat> certain places that I felt are so comfortable and so free and wanting these memories to stay forever and kept on speaking about it with people, <clears throat> just to mention how amazing it was and again repeating that and music, um, movies, you know, all kinds of ways which I really try to keep in place instead of letting everything be as it is. So this is amazing how by the power of open intelligence we, we overcome this negativity and self-commentary and self-criticism and self-focus basically. <laughs> and we are just completely open to, to life to harmonize relationship and to be available and to know what to do with the sharing the training with others. And you can have all kinds of thoughts and emotions, all kinds of data, it doesn't, they don't need to change. So that's, that's really good, they don't need to change. And at the same time, when you will learn open intelligence, you can share your experience. You can simply share your experience for those who are open, that's right those who are open, but also those who are not open, you can simply remain open. Your example, our example of relying on open intelligence is so, it's so powerful. It's, it's, it doesn't compromise with what people think. Because, you know, people think all kinds of things. That's also something that resolved, thinking about what people think about me. You know, that was a whole day going with that sentence in my mind, what people think about me. So by the power of open intelligence, we're completely relaxed and train up this instinctive recognition to know what is of most benefit. We grow into it. We grow into it. We learn how to take responsibility for our anger. With the support we have, we have the trainer, we have the short moments, we have the training. And these are things that used to very much disturbed me or feel afflicted, you know, like not really outshone. <laughs> you know, they came back and came back, but then seeing, oh, they, they like you so too, they're losing their power, more and more losing their power until they're unnoticed like the stars in the sky. You know, like now there are stars in the sky, but we can't see them. That's like outshining. That's like outshining. The sun is, is similar to open intelligence, outshining all data, outshining all thoughts and emotions, sensations. And then um, the stars, the data unseen. And 
In the night you can see the stars. So we know the data are there, but then in the morning we can't see them. So our shining can be similar to it, it can be similar to the shining of planets and stars. But also if data are coming back again and again, it doesn't mean that you know it doesn't mean that um, uh, it's not outshone because everything is already open intelligence is already present, but you just keep getting confidence with the practice and with the support to see that it can't affect you any longer like it used to.